Many people have difficulties in reading sacred scriptures, and in fact, many of them doesn't know how to do it. But the church, as a mother, gives us a direction through a very ancient way of reading the Bible. It is called Lexi Divina, that means divine reading. And we can do it in five steps. First, reading, then meditation, prayer, contemplation, and resolution. To help you in this journey, we provided for you a compendium of Lexi Divina, which is a book, like a journal, containing all the references for daily reading for the whole liturgical year, and a place where you can write your meditation. In addition to that, there are beautiful meditations from our founder on the theme of this year, the glorious freedom of the children of God. By purchasing one of these books, you are helping our mission and growing in knowledge of God through the scriptures. Hello everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth, MC of the Word Community, and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us this April 2nd, Good Friday, Friday where we celebrate the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. For first reading today, we will read Isaiah chapter, fifth, chapter 52, verse 13, and to chapter 53, verse 12. Let's start the reading of the Word of God for this Holy Friday. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of sons of men. So he startled many nations, kings, shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what, he, what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew before the Lord like a young plant, and like a root out of the dry ground, he had no form of, or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appear, appearance that what nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and he held and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made, made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All were like sheep, have all we like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned to their own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that that before its shedders is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined this, his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made, him, they made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with, with the rich, although he had, he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. 
the righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was number, numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This whole chapter of Prophet Isaiah, he's talking about this servant that we've been speaking this past week, Holy Week. The servant of the Lord that will suffer for, for God's people. In the first verse 13, we see God saying, See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. The cross of our Lord was lifted up high for everyone to see. This cross that brought us salvation. And then in this beautiful account, we see Jesus' life completely, completely open here in this, prof in this prophecy of Isaiah. Jesus fulfilled every single word of this prophecy. He bore in our infirmities. He carried our diseases. And we account him as stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that makes us whole. And by his bru bruises, we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. By his cross, all the wounds and bruises and suffering that Jesus endured on the cross was to save us. He saved us through his cross that was lifted up high for all of us and for everyone to see. Psalm today, Psalm 31 says, In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I am the scorn of my adversaries, a whore to my neighbors, an, ob an object of dread of my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mine like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All you who wait for the Lord. Even though today is a day of sacrifice, a day that we meditate upon the sacrificial offering of our Lord, Psalm tells us, Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Be strong. Be strong with the cross. Be strong looking at the cross. The cross is not an instrument of death. The cross is an instrument of salvation. Through the cross, we received salvation. Second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse, verses 14 to 16, and then we go to chapter 5, verses 7 to 9, says, Since we have a great high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who, we, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who, we, who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. 
Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a high priest that is not unable to understand what we go through. Jesus suffered in his body our sufferings. And most especially, this, uh, this horrible feeling of feeling abandoned by the Father. Jesus experienced every single thing in his blood accepts and his body accept sin he understands us let us approach him because he understands us jesus knows us he knows what we go through jesus offered prayers and supplications for us and he learned obedience through what he suffered and we can learn from this we will learn obedience to God through what we suffer. We need to go through sufferings to know what is to truly obey God, to love God, and to be loved by God. Gospel today is Gospel of St. John, chapter 18, verse 1, until chapter 19, verse 42, is the account of the Passion of our Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. After they had eaten the supper, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kindrum Valley to a place where, he, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because, G because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detach detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. When Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Here I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. When Judas said to him, When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that, had, that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their of officer, and the Jewish police, arrest police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they looked they took him as Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, Are you not also one of the men's disciple one of these men's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire 
because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming, them, and warming them themselves. Peter also was standing with them and, war and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about, the, about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoke openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoke wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent, his, sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, Are you not also one of his, of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear, of, whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at the moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas and Pilate's courtyard, headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters, so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. They replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? The Jews? Do you ask this, do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I relieve someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you, the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and handed, handed him flog. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews! And they struck him on the face. Pilate went again out and said to them, Look, I'm bringing, bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They answered him, you, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he claimed to be the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? 
you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilt of a greater sin. From then, from then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard this word, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to, to, to the Jews, Here's your king, they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and, car and carrying the cross by himself. He went out to, to what is called the, the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two, two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an instruction written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read the inscriptions because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest of the Jews said to the Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate said, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, a wife of Cleophas, Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here's your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here's your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her in his home. After this, when Jesus knew that all, all was now finished, in order to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty, a jar full of Sour wine, sour wine was standing there. They put a sponge full of wine on a branch of his soap and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was a day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because the Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. He, so they asked Pilate to have the legs of the, of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. When the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may live, may believe. This testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things accord, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, Another passage of scripture says, They will look at the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, 
because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred, hundred weight. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it and wrapped and wrapped it with the pieces of the lining cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had been laid. And so, because it was a Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Amen.